if I press if I press um, Alt and mouse click, I can store this view and give it a name. I could call it track only or track name only. And if I click up here again and add some more, path activities always used, mute is always used, channel is very useful. And um, let's say volume. But we want to change the order of these. You click um, control and you can see the um, blue, sorry, the yellow lines come up. And we can move this, this column over there. And volume is here now and tracks there and channel. Click control, keep control pressed. Now click on the channel area. Move it across. Let's do the same thing again. Now I did press control, but sometimes if you're not exactly on the right thing, like if I'm in here for example, oh, I still worked, but sometimes it just doesn't work. And I can store this one again. I press Alt, store the view, let's call it name, activity, mute, volume and channel. And now I can just recall these views by pressing Alt and click and I'm going to track name only. Alt and click, track name and everything. And if you want to go to town with all these settings then you could just open up quite a lot of them instrument output pan the patch name the actual sound chosen on the sound module program is the equivalent just in numbers term transpose velocity we haven't spoken about velocity yet and um, yeah let's say um, bank and then open the um, tracks up and as you can see, they're still, they're still at the end of the track view. And you can also go in here and make some of them a bit, a bit less room consuming. But it doesn't work on all of them. Patch name, you can minimize. Instrument, you can minimize. We can open it up again a bit more. No, we can't channel you could maximize and minimize track name down to the minimum but the ones with with the um, icons like the transpose one or the pan one you can't ch change the um, size of that column but the columns people use most of the time are our activity the class whether it's an audio track or a MIDI track the mutability of the track the name of the track instrument only now and again Channel is important, outputs are important, volume only now and again, pan now and again can be useful, patch name is not necessary, that often program is not necessarily transpose and velocity and bank aren't really used. So these are the main ones and they're usually arranged in a way so you can read all of these. a bit smaller. Let's move the output to the end by pressing control. Control and then keeping hold of it. This is like a standard output and then you can always reduce the view of this output column because you know if it's an M it's going to go to the master for the audio tracks. This is the LM7, the JX16 and the Universal Sound module. Let's have a look at the inspectors of different track classes. If we have an audio track, for example, this is what the inspector looks like for an audio track. And if we've got an audio part, like this, the inspector looks the same. Apart from now that the part's here, you've still got the start and end settings for the parts. If nothing is selected, but we're still in an audio track, then these appear to be blank. 
you make the um, parts play earlier or later with this one here. This will mean the parts come in a little bit later. And this means the parts are going to be played a little bit earlier. Keep this one to zero if you can. Channels, this is your audio channel that, that the part is playing on or the track's playing on. Um, with this one you enable the monitoring of the part and also the fact that you can record from the source. This button switches between mono or stereo. I'll delete this one, change it to a different channel, mono stereo. See that you can only switch on channels that are odd numbers to stereo channels. So this is an odd number again, number three. I can switch this one over to a stereo channel. With this becoming a stereo channel, it'll record from two sources, in one left, in one right. Um, switch this one off again. That one was channel 4. Now with this one being in channel 4 here, I'll try to switch this one to a stereo file and it gives me the error message that I can't turn this one into a stereo file, into a stereo track. Further down, um, this is the input source again. With it being a mono track, I can now choose which input I want to record, in one left or in one right. And if we go into the VST instrument inputs, as we did earlier on, and switch all of these on, then we'll have more options here to choose from. This one here brings up the uh, the channel settings for the particular particular tracks or particular channels really. Inserts. We'll talk about those things later on. Dynamic settings. Dynamic settings again, and and if you do have anything switched on on certain channels, these ones will light up. Then, for example, if I go for the EQ and switch on the EQ on that particular channel, we can see the EQ light comes on. And if I switch on an effect, the effect light goes on. And if I switch on an insert, have to choose one first. Let's use that one as an insert. Switch it on, and this one comes on as well. And the same applies to dynamic. As soon as I switch on something in the dynamic area, all these lights go on. So this will tell you whether there's something, or whether some of the effects are used on a particular track or on a particular channel. If I go to channel 4 here as well, which I can do, I can have two tracks playing on the same channel. You can see that these lights go on for both tracks now. And if I change the channel here again, so this track plays on channel 3, the lights are off for that track channel, and the lights are on for this one here. If I switch off the inserts and effects and the compression settings, back to no lights on. This is your pan, left right setting. Works in a similar way to the MIDI left right, apart from this one is for the whole channel. And it'll affect all channels or all tracks that use the same channel. Here if I set this one to channel 4, then I have the same right 54 setting as in that one. Enter for that one. Pan left, right 54. And if I go to channel 3 here, it's back in the center again. And um, one thing might be interesting to note that these settings here are the same as what you can see when you open the channel mixer. Right, move it over here. Here's my channel 4, and you can see channel 4, the pan settings. I've gone to the right, and if I change this one here, off the left and bring up the mixer again, channel 4, there's channel 4, that's gone down to the left now. If I change the volume on channel 4, you can see that as soon as I let go with the mouse, these volume figures change as well. They're in dB, so this one would read minus 18.5 dB and this would read plus 6 dB and 0 dB is the default 
double click here and type in zero. Or you can just double click there and type in zero as well. The channel cross is, um, is a specialty function for audio and we need to talk about that one a little bit later on. But they're not just audio and MIDI tracks in Cubase, you can also have different tracks. For example, you could have a drum track and a drum track has a slightly different inspector to, um, to a MIDI track. This was the MIDI track again. Notice you've got the patch name here and the transpose field. The drum track hasn't got the transpose field because drum instruments aren't usually transposed in that way. And then you've got the drum map instead. A drum map, we'll have to talk about that one later on, it'll, it'll show in your drum editor. Let's turn this track into a folder track. Folder tracks can be either soloed or not soloed, but apart from that you can't really do anything else in the inspector. Mix tracks. You've got a little drop down menu here for the mixer maps that you want to use. And the group tracks, they can be transposed or, or, or not transposed basically. The inspector settings for a tape track look like this, and for a chord track like that. But as I've said, the main tracks that are being used in Cubase are audio tracks, MIDI tracks, drum tracks if you want to use them folder tracks if you've got many many tracks on your arrangement window and you need to create overview or you need to create um, um, unity between the different track classes for example you've got eight tracks for for your drum section and maybe 15 tracks for your vocal parts then you use the folder tracks and the mix tracks are used for for um, mixer automation in MIDI and also in audio as well One last thing we could say about the inspector and also the um, track columns here is that you can that you can s move the tracks up and down just like this and you can rearrange them if you want to. Take the transport bar down there. For example, if you want to keep your drum tracks right at the top and your bass tracks at the top as well or if you prefer to keep the drum tracks at the bottom, drum and bass at the bottom maybe, and keep the melody tracks right at the top. And the harmony tracks there. So this is what you can do to the tracks. And if you want to focus on a certain part, for example you want to focus on the banjo track, then you can make it a lot wider than the other ones are. Or focus on the harmony, on the harmony part, you, you just open it up a bit. This feature works on the bottom of the track, not on the top. So if I'm here, I'd be increasing the, the size of the audio 2 track and not the size of the harmony track. 